Well, once again, good morning, everybody. Let's get ready for a great day. Got a run order for you. Looks something like this. We're going to start off with Pro Bracket, followed by Sportsman. Then we'll go to Super Pro, then Hot Rod, Motorcycle. We'll then roll into our Junior Classes, Junior Thunder, Junior Lightning, and finally Junior Street. Following that, we'll have License and Test. Then we'll do it all over again. Game plan is to have two hits, then roll into eliminations for all classes. And our uh, projected start time at this time is looking like around 9.30 a.m. So still a little, uh, a little cool out there. There's a nice breeze, but the sun is shining. The track is coming along quite nicely, as I understand. So, uh, once again, get ready for a fantastic day. I do believe the concession stand is open. So, uh, if you have not yet gotten yourself breakfast, there's an option for you. And uh, lots coming up here at the Titanium Strip in 2024. And uh, so if you have not yet heard, the entire track surface from the burnout box all the way to the finish line has been reground. So it is dead flat. We're talking laser flat. And... Uh, It's ultimately the best surface that uh, one can come up with. Kurt Johnson, Total Venue Concepts, on the job. Two different grinding processes took place. Following that, there's a lot of hard work that took place. Getting it all washed, clean, dry, and prepared for this, our opening weekend. So big hats off to the uh, BC Custom Car Association and everybody involved in that little venture. Should be pretty awesome. I am looking forward to it. So uh, once again, our run order for today will be starting with Pro, then Sportsman, Super Pro, Hot Rod, Motorcycle, Junior Thunder, Junior Lightning, Junior Street, and finally License and Test. And again, two qualifiers for everybody, then we roll into Eliminations. So if you have not gotten yourself through tech, I suggest you get that done out of the way and uh, get ready to go. You were talking, John, about uh, how they had just redone the whole track service. There was a lot of really good passes yesterday. Um, people were taking it a bit easy in the morning. They were just feeling things out at first, but it wasn't long where we were seeing those wheel stands again and people putting that hammer down. So it should be a fun day. Oh, absolutely. It's, uh... Opening weekend is uh, kind of cool. Everybody's got a little bit of rust to shake off, maybe uh, some more than others. But uh, as we kind of get back into the groove, so once again, I'm going to go uh, make sure the little truck's staying warm. I'll be back up here when I can. Of course, I'll be racing as well as announcing this year. So uh, we're just going to kind of take it as it comes. So once again, everybody. Welcome back to Mission Raceway Park. Here we go with 2024.
Hey, everybody, listen up out there in the pits. We are going to have a driver's meeting. It'll take place beside the tower in the uh, grassy area. So once again, we are going to have a driver's meeting that will take place just as soon as we can get everybody gathered up here to the tower. So all drivers, all drivers, please make your way to the tower. So once again, we have called a driver's meeting. We're looking for all drivers to the base of the tower in the grassy area. So once again, all drivers, please make your way to the tower.
Attention in the pits, attention in the pits. Bubba Speed Shop Pro Bracket, you are on standby. Bubba Speed Shop Pro Bracket, you are on standby. Hey, attention in the pits, attention in the pits, especially super pro racers. I have some very important announcements, uh, updates rather, on what we just heard at the meeting. So, when it comes to crosstalk being on or off in super pro, we will see an indicator on the reader boards. Now, if crosstalk is turned off, both reader boards will be displaying a dash. Now, if you happen to be the slower car in that pair, and you have crosstalk in your box, and you see that dash, do not be alarmed. All that means is that uh, crosstalk is turned off. It won't affect you if you are the slower car in that pairing. Now, comparatively, if uh, a pair rolls up and it's the slower car requesting that crosstalk be turned off, we will simply leave crosstalk turned on as, being the slower car, it will have no effect on him. So again, Put an N on your window, make it very large, very legible, very clear. The tower needs to see that N. The tower will then decide whether or not they need to turn crosstalk on or off for that pair. So again, if you do not want crosstalk turned on, you want it turned off, make sure you have an N in front of your dial. And if you are, in fact, the faster car in that pair, crosstalk will be turned off, and you will be able to determine that by seeing a dash on the reader board. The difference between this system and the old CompuLink system is that the dash would appear only on one side of the reader board. Or, sorry, only on one of the reader boards. If a car pulled up with an N, that would get entered in the computer, and a dash would be on the reader board in front of the dial. With AccuTime, it works a little bit different. CompuLink used to do the thinking for us. We now have to look at whether or not the faster car is the one with the N, and then make the decision for that pair whether we turn crosstalk on or off. So one more time, real quick, because often there's a confusion over matters like this. So if you're running Super Pro and you do not have a delay box or you don't have a delay box with crosstalk, you need to put an end in front of your dial. And if, in fact, you are the quicker car in your pairing, crosstalk will be turned off, and you'll be able to determine that by seeing a dash in front of your dial on the reader board. If you are the slower car in that pair, then having crosstalk turned on will have no effect on you, so we will, in fact, leave it turned on, and there will not be a dash. So I hope we've made that clear. And uh, moving forward, possibly uh, we'll be able to improve on the present system a little bit and get that dash only where it's needed. 
But for now, this is the system we're running with. Realistically, it'll only affect uh, a few racers directly. Indirectly, it affects everyone in Super Pro. So thanks, everybody. And uh, we've got Sportsman on standby. That was the last thing I or Sorry, Pro Bracket on standby. That was the last thing I heard. Hey, listen up, everybody. This is it. The first call to the lanes for 2024. Pro Bracket, come on down. Pro Bracket, this is your call to the staging lanes. Pro Bracket, bring them down. Sportsman, you'll, you'll be next, so uh, get ready to go. Sportsman, this is your standby call once again. Pro Bracket, come on down.
you have made the call for Bubba Speed Shop Pro Bracket to come on down to lanes one, two, three, and four. That is once again Bubba Speed Shop Pro Bracket lanes one, two, three, and four for your first of two qualifying hits. If you are having trouble hearing us down pit side, you tune into the radio station at 92.7 FM. Once again, 92.7 FM if you are having trouble hearing us down in the pits. And we will also be updating you with all the lane calls on Twitter as well, at Mission Raceway. That will be on Twitter as well, so you get all of that in real time. I spy with my little eye several Bubba Speed Shop Pro Bracket cars coming around the corner. Engines are fired up, and we once again get to bathe in the sweet, sweet smell of gasoline and burning rubber. Steve Baskerville will be the first driver down track to make a competitive pass in the 2024 season. He'll be up with Grant Gordon in the Four Cycles and uh, Customs Incorporated Dart. It's an old generation of cars versus the humble two liter turbo engine. We've been waiting six long months for this moment.
the 2024 season officially underway and it starts with a double 03 light for Grant Gordon while Baskerville goes 17 thou red does not matter in qualifying though he'll get another chance 11.971 and 111 for Grant Gordon Baskerville goes 13.150 at 115 for the first pass of the season Lorenz Schwartz brings out the Titanium Auto Group of a Speed Shop 1983 Chevy Monte Carlo, your king of the track, 2022 winner. Racing Dell Northgraves in the Nova with that 414 small block Chevy motor. Quarter mile, 10.051, 133 miles an hour for Schwartz. Northgrave goes 10.366 at 128. Bring it up, Derek Shirk in the 1966 Chevy 2 of our Titanium Auto Group. Veronica Hodgson, the 2019 kick of the track and 2017 sportsman champion in the dart. Shirk caught napping on the tree. That'll be a time he'll be looking to improve. 0.138 on the tree for Shirk. Veronica Hodgson was 053. 11.025 at 119 for Derek Shirk. Hodgson goes 11.868 at 110. Got that good old Dodge Challenger over there, TCS side. Facing off against Brian Heffel in the Vega. Nine point three four seven one hundred forty-four miles an hour for a half fold. The Dodge Challenger goes twelve point zero two three at one thirteen. Bobby Ayler's taking that limited street four Mustang Fox body with the six-stroker motor to race it down in the GCS side. David Rastad takes the nineteen eighty Malibu to race on the Lord Coast side. Attention to the pits, attention to the pits. Sportsmen to the lanes, sportsmen to the lanes. Sportsmen lanes one, two, three, and four. Sportsmen lanes one, two, three, and four. Super Pro, you're on standby. Oh boy, Rastak getting a little close to the center line, but keeps his foot in it. Bobby Ehlers goes 10.088, 131 miles an hour. Rastak goes 11.865 at 109. Bring up Ross Hornall in the 78 Fairmont out of Harrison. Walter Johnson takes that uh, 1972 Chevelle back to the staging beams. Oh, 077 light to a 0.156. Quarter mile, Ross Hornall, 10.605 at 122. Walter Johnson goes 11.148 at 120 miles an hour. James Dobson, the dead man racing runs engine machine with that 383 small block Chevy uh, Camaro. Racing against Cassidy Langley in that 2011 Ford. Thompson goes 11.873 at 97 miles an hour. Cassidy Langley goes 15.837. Dobson off the throttle at the quarter mile was going 97 as well at the eight. So that car's got a lot more speed underneath it. We saw Bobby Ehlers up earlier in this session. Now we bring up Ralph Ehlers in the Junkyard Dog. Six liter LS Mustang Fox body to race John to back in the Rag Torque Systems S10.
Ehlers turns it red on the tree. Whereas your fourth place finish in the points from last season goes 19th out of the good. Tobacco's 10.346 at 128. Ralph Ehlers was 10.717 at 125. Sean Langley will bring up the Mach 1 Hustler. Now that car, brand new paint job I can see. That car was all red last season. Looking very striking with that black uh, color with the blue stripe along it. Robert Chislock, uh, Chillock now with the Dodge Challenger out of Blaine, Washington. Boy, oh boy, Sean Langley put an uneasy lot all over the groove. The Challenger goes 12.407 at 75. Sean Langley goes 13.411 1, 1 at 118. Next pairing up, Mal Patterson in the Malfunction Albion Thailand Pontiac Acadian to race against Ross Walker. Both cars carry the front wheels. The better the light goes to the TCS lane. Mal Patterson puts down an 028. Runs that out the back door with a 10.050 at 131. Ross Walker goes 10.112 at 130. So with a very even pass there, the margin of victory between them only about two tenths of a second. Rich Dyes brings up the Transport Logistics Chevy Nova facing off against Dennis Winton in that shaggy Bel Air. O90 to an 092 on the light. Dyes goes 11.209, 117 miles an hour. Dennis Winton puts it down in the 11.602 at 114. Lights, Dustin Hunter turning on the red by just five thou. Cassie tipped by a little bit more than that. Hunter was the quicker of the pair, goes 9.171, 145. Cassie tipping goes 11.471 at 116. down track. TCS line going to get their way out in front. Goes 10.141 at 94. The Lord Lane goes 10.582 at 121. Bring up the Charger, Nick Douglas. The Sportsman Track Champion from 2023 going to bring it up in the TCS lane. Daryl Tippy will be up in the Chevy 2 beside him. Oh, 10th foul red for Nick Douglas out of the gate. Daryl Tippy goes 018 to the good. And Daryl Tippy goes 10.591 at 125. Nick Douglas goes 12.256 at 111. Hey, attention to the pits, attention to the pits. Vancouver Car Rap, sorry, Rad Torch Systems Super Pro, Rad Torch Systems Super Pro to lanes one, two, three, and four. That is Rad Torch Systems Super Pro, lanes one, two, three, and four. Final pair in Bubble Speed Shop Pro Bracket. 
Well, Nolan, say so far, so good. Yeah, so far, so good. So Jim Benke and Chris Stone out there, a couple of Mopars. Chris Stone with a nice 15 light, follows that up with a 998, the top end. Jim Benke missed the tree a little bit. We won't talk about that. He went 10, 10, 131 miles an hour. And I believe that was our final pair in pro bracket. Now we go with Sportsman. So Eric Hansen. Sporting some uh, new sponsorship this year by the looks of things. And, uh, yeah, what's that guy's name in the right lane there? Is it McKenzie? Steve McKenzie, maybe? Uh, I don't know. We'll figure it out eventually. So neither driver Stellar on the tree. Finish line, however, it is Eric getting there first with a 12.48. Now Kevin McCauley and Dave Copeland. Copeland in the right lane. In the SUV. McCauley over here, left side. the wheel of his cutlass. So McCauley leads the way. 1167, 113 miles an hour. Dave Copeland, 1597 at 86 miles per hour. So making our way through this first and opening round of time trials, we've got two of them planned, but uh, fairly small run order for the day, so it's gonna go quick. So we have made the call for Super Pro to the staging lanes. We need Super Pro in the staging lanes, please. One, two, three, and four. Super Pro to the lane. Tyler Dobson, left side, and Cassidy Langley in the right lane. Dobson goes 1176, 117 miles an hour, while Cassidy in the right lane, 1560 at 89. So I have spent a, a fair bit of time in front of an AccuTime screen, but it's, it's not as... Uh, as second nature as the old CompuLink screen was for me. But uh, that's good, we'll get used to it. So now Ann Copeland taking on Steve Baskerville. So I'm not sure, I think we got some mixed up numbers here because uh, I think we already saw Steve Baskerville in his Volkswagen Golf go down and, uh, oh, okay, maybe that's what's going on. Good, good point. So now Sylvia Hoogstens is lined up with Phil Marvetz. Marvetz, multi-time champion in sportsman at this track. Well, Marvetz in the duster, right-hand lane, 1179, 110 miles an hour. Fits quite nicely inside of the uh, new Sportsman Index, where you can now go as quick as 1160. So we'll make a uh, another call for Super Pro. Super Pro, we need you in the lane. Super Pro, come on down. Super Pro, we need you in the lanes. Speaking of which, Nolan, I'm gonna go get in the lanes. the first call of your class in the opening race, do you? So, uh, well, we'll wish John all the best of luck down there in qualifying once again. Roland Lowen goes 12.875 in the Meteor at 101 miles an hour. Eric Brighton goes 19.561 at 67. Brendan Piskasek in the Mustang, bringing it up against Grant Gordon for Four Cycle Customs' is Dodge Dart.
to the top end, and it'll be Grant Gordon going 11.968 at 111 miles an hour. Piscasek goes 13.121 at 102. Attention to the pits, attention to the pits. Hot Rod and Motorcycles, you are on standby. Old Car Center Hot Rod and Mountain View Harley-Davidson Motorcycle, you are both on standby. Bill Wells takes it up in the TNT Chevy Malibu, facing off against Sean Langley in that Mustang. Oh, getting there by just three hundredths. 11.615 at 119 for Langley. Wells goes 11.582 at 112. Brings up Jessica Armstrong for Badass Garage, Render Racing, Home Masters Team, and Rhode Iron in the Dodge to race against Mark Ferguson in his Pontiac Firebird. Ferguson goes 12.521, 108 miles an hour. Jessica Armstrong goes 16.024 at 79. Bring out the Charger once again. Very strikingly blue. Oh, 25 on the tree. And he'll run it out the back door with a 12.173 at 112 miles an hour. We're gonna be down for just a moment. We're gonna do some dragging before we get set to roll into Rad Torch System Super Pro as that wraps up first round of qualifying for Vancouver Car Wrap Sportsman. So both the fastest and the quickest class of the weekend getting set to take it up to the lanes. Seen a lot of cars starting to migrate to the back of the staging lanes. It's firing up. We're going to bring the uh, first pair around momentarily. Attention to the pits. Attention to the pits. 
Old Car Center Hot Rod. Coming up to lanes three and four. Old Car Center Hot Rod to lanes three and four. Mountain View Harley Davidson Motorcycle to lanes one and two. Mountain View Harley Davidson Motorcycle to one and two. So once again, that is Motorcycle to lanes one and two. Hot Rod to three and four. First pair coming around. Martin Rochelle will bring up his Super Street Malibu, frequently a runner in the Lower Kawada Parts Super Combo category, but this weekend only going to be racing in Super Pro. John Jenkins brings it up in the West Coast Building Restorations MRI Supply Chevy S10 in the left lane. First pair of Rat Torch System Super Pro down track. Rochelle runs it through a 10.04A, not even close to the Super Street Index. Evidently not using that throttle stop this weekend. He'll go uh, 127 miles an hour. John Jenkins went 11.123 at 120. Second call, second call for Hot Rod to lanes three and four and motorcycles to one and two. Old Car Center Hot Rod, this is your second call to lanes three and four. Mountain View Harley Davidson Motorcycle, second call to lanes one and two. Junior Dragsters and Junior Street, you are all on standby. Ted Bus for the Shawnigan Trucking Ford Roadster will fire down track in the TCS lane. Mike Robinson and the James Crimmage JS Power Sports Ford Roadster in the right lane. Bus goes uh, 8.999 with a 7 at 145 miles an hour, pretty much 9 seconds exactly. Mike Robinson goes 9.088 at 143. Next pair up, Andy Hatton in the Grinch Chevy Camaro. Racing against Warren Jacobson, another free runner in the Lord Kawada Park Super Combo category. Putting this Chevy 2 to work. Hatton deep stages, Jacobson making use of the throttle stop in that Chevrolet. Manhattan off the throttle early. Aborts the run, goes 11.866 at 69. Warren Jacobson puts down an 10.862 at 137. Bring up Lorenz Schwartz for Titanium Model Group and Bubba Speed Shop in his Monte Carlo. He'll race Jason Gibson in the 1991 Ford Mustang Fox Body. Close race, this one, quarter mile, two tenths, gives it to Gibson, 9.762 at 139. Loren Schwartz goes 10.020 at 134. Bring up a very familiar name, Kevin McNichol for Titanium Model Group, your 2023 Door Wars and Smoke Fire and Thunder champion. He'll race against Jan Christensen, the El Gringo Nova. Christensen, uh, Christensen, of course, your defending champion 
In Rack Torque System Super Pro, McNichol was fourth in the points last season. Missing out by about 120. Only separate by one thou on the tree, 031 to 032. 8.425 at 160. McNichol goes 999 with a 5 at 134. John Tabak and Mike Stewart run down track. The Rat Torque Systems S10 will race against the Super Chicklet and Bucky's Mini Excavating Chevy 2. And believe that to be the last car in Super Pro, Rick Modal going down track. 8.6 for one, 159 miles an hour. First qualifying round of Rand Torch System Super Pro is in the books. We'll move on to Old Car Center Hot Rod. Bill Halicki in the bad example Ranchero for racing Sylvia Hoogson for the first pair in Old Car Center Hot Rod. Ten point five four eight one hundred twenty seven Hoogson goes twelve point six seven eight at one oh five. Attention to the pits, attention to the pits. Juniors to the lanes, juniors to the lanes. Pete of Industries, Junior, Thunder and Lightning to lanes one and two. That is Thunder to one, Lightning to two, and Street to three and four. Once again, that is Pete and Industries, Junior Thunder to lane one, Pete and Industries, Junior Lightning to lane two, Pete and Industries, Junior Street to lanes three and four. Glenn Fillingham. Takes the AMX down track alongside Roland Lowen in the Meteor. 12.094 to 112 for Fillingham. Lowen goes 12.750 at 102. Brings up Rob Hodgson in the Plymouth to race against John Sayer. Hodgson ripping it down track with John Sayer trailing behind. Hodgson goes 10.556 at 125 miles an hour. And John Sayer at the quarter mile will go 19.869 at 70. Matt Warner will take the Linden Service Center machine. That car known for its wheel stands. Dennis Winton of the Shaggy Bel Air. Alongside him. It was mentioned several times last season that Warner might want to consider investing in the wheelie bar. That only inspired him to make those wheelies even higher. Wheel 
Cradles up high and bouncing down past the 60 foot. 018 on the tree. I believe that puts him as the number one qualifier now in Hot Rod. He'll go 10.373 at 126. Dennis Winton goes 11.630 at 113. Dustin Hunter in the Ford Falcon will race Rob Monroe Sr. in the White Knocker Racing BNN Hot Rods Gibson Racing Transmissions along with Horizon Payne and Autobody on that Ford Model A. And Monroe carrying the front wheels past 60 feet. On an absolute tear right now. Down track goes 8.751 in the 150. Hunter goes 9.155 and 146. Bring up Keith Winterbottom along with Jerry Brabander. Winterbottom firing down track. Lifting out just shy of the quarter. It goes 10.765 at 97. That gives it to Burbander, who will go at a 10.481 at 125. And then that'll bring up Chris Stone for the Stone Cold Raising Dart. Alongside Jim Banky and Matt Rat, Torch Systems, Titanium Auto Group, Wheel Standing Barracuda. Attention to the pits, attention in the pits. License and test. This is your standby call. Cars looking to make licensing or test passes. This is your standby call. With a 997 at 131 from Stone and a 10.123 at 132 from Jim Banky, that will close out Old Car Center Hot Rod and we will roll straight into Mountain View Harley Davidson Motorcycle. And we'll kick it off with Tom Turan, your defending 2023 champion in the Daytona Motorsports Bolter Designs GSXR, dubbed the Kraken. So we are shutting down Turan for the time being as reports of potentially some debris on the racetrack at around 1,000 feet. So safety crew is going out to check things out, make sure everything's still in tip-top shape. And looking like Tom Turan will be the only rider who will be making a qualifying hit on this uh, first attempt. They will get two, though, so the rest of the pack will have their chance to get themselves back up in action. You can see the fleet of golf carts lining up uh, just by the starting line, as well as all of our junior dragsters are... Backed up around the corner. Sizable fields comparative to last year as well. And it was a good year for the, uh, for the Junior Dragster Series. So anticipating that it'll be another, uh, it'll be another packed year for them.
So from the sounds of it, a belt was recovered out on the racetrack. Now, I would assume that to be a motor belt that was uh, found out on the racetrack at about a that thousand foot mark. Uh, it has been removed, so we're going to fire Tom Turand again and send him back down track for his first qualifying hit. Well, it sounded like it was a good launch, but then the uh, bike pinged off the chip, and he will lift out aboard the run at about 330 feet. 037 on the tree, runs it through at 13.534 at 54 miles an hour. So Mountain View Harley-Davidson motorcycle wrapped up, and we are now going to roll straight into Peden Industries Junior Thunder for first round of qualifying of the season. Hunter Thompson bringing up the JBS equipment machine. He'll race against Emily White for the White Lightning Racing Warco Auto Parts Pioneer Truck and Trailer and Walco Industries Junior Dragster over in that TCS lane.
Just waiting now on Emily White to get all staged up. And they fire down track. Hunter Thompson looking like he'll get there first. Goes 887 at 75 miles an hour. Emily White goes 9.327 at 68. All the junior dragster categories racing only to the eighth mile instead of the quarter that every other class races to. Brings up Hunter Gallant in BDL Automotive Super Steve's Tires, Diversify Metalworks, Rocket Coatings with Paint by Rod Drink. Junior Dragster from, 2000, from 2016. He'll be racing against your 2023 defending champion Bentley Johnson from Open Speed Shop, Lucas Oil, and Heat Wave Visual. Red light star for Victor Galant, but red lights don't matter so much in qualifying. Goes 8.398 at 78 miles an hour. Bentley Johnson goes 8.707 at 76. That'll bring up Kate Rodri for the Ken Specialty Auto, Ernie Speed Custom, and Titanium Auto Group. Creative Drankster racing Ashton Katnick for TK Performance and Lord Kawada Parts. Katnick fully staged. Cadence Rodrigue follows close behind. Rodrigue turns on the red light by 10 thou. Ashton Katnick goes 072. Rodrigue follows up with a 9014 at 73 miles an hour. Ashton Katnick was 11.459 at 56. And I believe. This is the final pair of Peter Industries Junior Thunder rolling to the line. Attention to the pits, attention to the pits. License and test. License and test to lanes five and six. License and test to lanes five and six. Owen Armstrong brings up the badass garage, Home Masters team, Creative Dragster from 2004, while Dallas Jackson for TKO Hot Rods, will race the Martin Drags from 2009 in the Lord Kill Lane. Owen Armstrong at the eighth mile will go 13.868 at 44.9 miles an hour. Dallas Jackson goes 16.403 at 38.7. And we are going to keep rolling through Junior Thunder as Nate Green for Global Containers will race Wesley Armstrong. The elder brother to Owen Armstrong raced the Badass Garage Home Masters Team Martin Dragster. Some big junior fields, and uh, we hit record-sized junior dragster fields last year. 
And that field size only uh, has continued to expand as it is absolutely jam packed. There were six junior street cars that got licensed just yesterday night. So an even bigger junior street field to boot, Tyler Smith might have his work cut out for him this season. Point six three eight seventy four miles an hour for Nate Green. Wesley Armstrong goes twelve point one five nine at fifty three. Once again, attention in the pits. License and test. License and test. Second call to lanes five and six. License and test. Second call to lanes five and six. Jack Green making his return. We have an updated paint scheme on that junior dragster, Global Containers, and of course, Ring Brothers Racing. Racing Adam Katnick for TK Performance at Lorca Auto Parts. Katnick was a 2022 points champion. Hey, listen up out there in the pits. Pro Bracket, this is your standby call. Pro Bracket, you are on standby. Once again, Pro Bracket, standby call. So Nolan, you were commenting on the uh, the growth that we've seen in the junior classes. That is absolutely fantastic to see. It's going to be more full-size racers soon back on the racetrack, which is even better. Absolutely, these uh, these young kids are going to be the next generation of racers here at Mission Raceway Park and beyond. Again, just uh, cannot get over how great it is to see the kind of growth we've been seeing in these classes the last couple of years. So Jack Green and Adam Katnick. Adam Katnick in the right lane. For TK Performance, Lord Co. is the 2022 points champion. Jack Green, left side for Global Containers. Adam Katnick to the top end first, goes 8.16 at 69 miles an hour. Here comes Jack, 14.04 at 44 miles an hour. So next pair looks like this, Nash Gallant and Alex Green. So Hunter's little brother coming up left side of the racetrack. So Alex Green over in the right lane. I remember when this young man first started juniors, he got the hang of it right away. Just started mowing everybody down. So Alex Green, part of the uh, Green family racing operation. Couple of green lights. Alex Green leading the way. Lord Coe's side of the racetrack. It was 1164, 55 miles an hour. Nash Gallant with a nice 1275 at 49 miles an hour. So it looks like that will do it for Junior Thunder. Round one of qualifying. With that out of the way, we roll into Junior Lightning. The 
First pair, McKenna Thompson and C.L. Gagnon. C.L. in the right lane for Rad Torque Systems. McKenna over here, tower side in the TCS lane for JBS. We've got four bulbs lit. Both drivers get away green. Pretty much side by side. CL gets there just a little ahead, 793. Getting there ahead of a 799. Another JBS equipment entry. Nick Bond. Nick Bond, Tower Lane, for JBS Equipment. Now in Junior Lightning. Lincoln Shirk over there in the right lane. For Titanium, Rad, JBS, and JS Power Sports. Both these drivers had uh, pretty successful junior Thunder careers, as I recall. Four bulbs lit, here comes the tree. Lincoln turns it red by one thou. That's hitting the tree pretty hard. Nick Bond with a 52 light. Bond a little quicker up there at the top end, 795. Actually, uh, Lincoln Shirk was a little quicker. Quicker than he's allowed to go, I believe. 780. Well, they'll have to uh, whoa that thing up just a little bit. Nick Bond, your defending champ. So it looks like uh, trouble for the car in the left lane. So this will be a single. Isabella Marshall coming up right hand side. So once again, we'll make a call for Pro Bracket. Pro Bracket, this is your call to the staging lanes. We'll take Pro Bracket to lanes one, two, three, and four. Pro Bracket, come on down. Isabella does a nice job on the starting line with an 016 light. The car uh, sounded a little bit finicky out there at about the 200 foot mark. That'll bring up another pair. Lexi Winterbottom. Lexi Winterbottom, left-hand side of the racetrack. As I recall, Lexi had herself a pretty good weekend. The ET Finals last year in Woodburn, Oregon. Abby White in the right lane.
couple of green lights at the finish line. It is Abigail White getting there first, 783. Lexi Winterbottom with an 802 on the TACS reader board. So I don't have a name for you in the left lane. Very, uh, pretty slick looking junior. I will say that. Turns it red by just two thousandths of a second. That's close. So I think that will do it for Junior Lightning. We've got another junior rolling up to the starting line. However, that is going to be a licensing pass. Following that, we'll roll into Junior Street. Followed by license and test. We do have our Pro Bracket cars arriving in the lanes. Lanes one, two, three, and four for Pro Bracket. Come on down. I'll tell you what, John, I see a lot of Junior Street cars in the lane. Tyler Smith's got to be a little bit nervous. It was a bit of a lower pack in Junior Street. I think only like four or five cars showing up on the regular. Smith, it took him until the end of August to finally be knocked off that top step, but still won the points championship locked up well before uh, the mission finals. He's got his work cut out for him this season. Absolutely. Again, a... Uh Fantastic to see growth in any of these junior classes. And uh, what we have been seeing in junior dragsters over the last couple of years seems to have morphed into junior street as well. So that's awesome.
All right, looks like they gave the new driver a couple of cracks at the tree. They're just going to push him back. Looks like the uh, car isn't cooperating. So we got a bunch of junior street cars in the lanes ready to go. I believe there uh, is a car or two up for license and test. Following that, I believe they're going to do a, a little touch up on the track surface and then we'll roll into the second round of time trials. So first pair up in Junior Street, and it's a pair of pickups. Very familiar face over there in the uh, Lord Kill Lane. Tyler Smith and the Chevy 1500 for Zap Strap Racing. Almost undefeated in 2023, save for a couple of weekends. Josephine Smith also for Zap Strap Racing, bringing up the Chevy over here in the TCS lane. Point 0.13 for Josephine Smith on the tree. Tyler Smith goes 0 0.095. Smith goes 10.431 at 69 miles an hour. Tyler Smith goes 10.833 at 65. Brings up Jacob Stoby in the AT4 pickup racing against Jordan O. Stopey will get there first in the blue pickup, goes 10.153 at 67. Jordan goes 12.086 at 74. Brings up Riker Towson in the 1987 GMC 500 racing Dallas Nassi in the BC Dragget, Snorkum Canada 2000 overtime Honda Civic. Riker Towson goes 9.282 at 76 miles an hour. Dallas Nassi, 12.132 at 58. James McNeil brings it up in the 2013 Nissan pickup. He'll race Sophia Getz, Lord Coast side.
9.549 at 79 miles an hour for Sophia Gas. James McNeil goes 11.076 at 68. Bring up the Monroes, Jenna, TCS side, and Tyler Smith's main competition from last season. Tara Monroe, the 2022 class champion, was upset by an almost unprecedented show of uh, dominance from Tyler Smith. Looking to see if she can reclaim that crown in 2024. Jenna Monroe goes 10.652, 67 miles an hour. Tara Monroe, 13.356 at 44. That'll wrap it up for Peter Industries Junior Street. We now roll into some test and licensing passes before we go to some track prep. Got a Malibu coming up over here, Lord Coast side. Goes 11.523 at 115 miles an hour. And now for one of the drivers that uh, graduated from Pete and Industries Junior Lightning. It is Emma Debris Coos. Debris Coos licensing that dragster to try to run in the Rad Torque Systems Super Pro category. Possibility that we might see that car in competition at the end of the weekend as well on Sunday. Assuming the weather holds out at least. Pulls it to about uh, 330 feet before lifting out per the licensing requirements. Went 4.045 to the 330 mark. At quarter track. Now, here's something you don't see all that often, a front engine dragster. Now, this is how dragsters used to run back when they were first being conceptualized. Then uh, somebody realized having an engine that could possibly explode right in front of your face, a little bit dangerous, which is why they moved behind the drivers. But you still see them out every once in a while. So some vintage racing for a test pass.
Well, there was an effort. But the car, uh, breaking traction, and we'll shut it off at about 60 foot. And it'll be uh, a slow roll to the top end. Looking like we got one more testing pass coming around. Mustang Fox body bringing it up over here, TCS side. Now, this is going to be a Pro 4 light instead of the Sportsman light we've usually seen these cars run. Possibly expecting an eighth mile pass from Anthony Katnick here in the TK performance of Lorca Water Parts Fox Body. Could be looking to run this car in the door slammer category too, in which case this would be a full pull to the quarter mile. It was sounding good until about 300 feet, then it sputtered, lost fire, coast through 12.095 at 80 miles an hour. So the tractor is going to come back out onto the racetrack. We're going to be down for a bit of track prep. And when we return, we'll be with you with the Bubba Speed Shop Pro Bracket for second and final round of qualifying. Tension in the pits, tension in the pits. Vancouver Car Wrap Sportsman, you are on standby. Vancouver Car Wrap Sportsman, you are on standby.
Tension in the pits, attention in the pits. If you are interested in some Krispy Kreme donuts, there is a very limited supply, as I have been tipped off down at the Grassy Knoll. Some of the Junior Dragster kids are selling them down there on that Grassy Knoll by the Timing Tower. So if you want some Krispy Kreme donuts, come on down and get them. There is a very limited supply. Cash only. Cash only. No card. Top five so far in Bubba Speed Shop Pro Bracket. The number one qualifier stands at Grant Gordon with a 3 thou reaction time. Bob Yaler's shortly behind with a 13 thou reaction time. 0.015, we'll see Chris Stone in number three with Daryl Tippy with 018. And then 019 is John Tabak to round out the top five. Attention to the pits, attention to the pits. Vancouver Car Rap Sportsman to lanes one, two, three, and four. Vancouver Car Rap Sportsman to lanes one, two, three, and four. That's once again Sportsman, lanes one through four. Pro Bracket, the biggest class we have so far on this uh, Saturday morning as they have qualified 30 cars during the uh, first round of qualifying. Only 19 in Sportsman. And then in Super Pro, well, it was a bit more than uh, than uh, Sportsman, but still, nonetheless, Pro stands as your biggest class. Grant Gordon, your number one qualifier, going to be first up alongside Steve Baskerville, the Four Cycle Customs Incorporated Dodge Dart to race that two-liter turbo. Volkswagen Golf. Oh, 22 red for Grant Gordon, so he will stand as the number one qualifier with our 003. We'll see if anybody can follow up with a 002, a 001, or even a trip zip. Baskerville goes 0.28 on the tree. So he will not improve on his uh, qualifying time there. He will remain. Eh, he will. He'll improve on the 26th. Bring up Daryl Tippy and the. 1962 Chevy 2 against Ralph Ehlers in the Junkyard Dog Fox Body. Oh, 19 to the good for Ralph Ehlers, but uh, with that extra four, that'll put him just behind John DeBack. So Ralph Ehlers jumping down from stone dead last on the qualifying. She's down at 30th up to the number six position. Bring up Del Northgrove alongside Bobby Ehlers. Northgraves in the 1977 Nova. 
For the 414 small block Chevy motor, we'll be racing against that six stroker Ford Mustang. North Graves goes 10.402 at 120 miles an hour. Bobby Ehlers was 10.11 with a three at 131. Walter Johnson will take up the Chevelle to race against Sean Langley in that Mustang. And Walter Johnson left before the treat was ready. Sean Langley gonna go down track with a .260 reaction time. Langley puts down an 11.689 at 119. And Walter Johnson will reset for a single. Ten point nine seven one at one hundred twenty one miles on the tree for Walter Johnson. Veronica Hodgson will take up the Dodge Dart to race James Dodson, a uh, Dobson, excuse me, and the Dead Man Racing Ron's Engine Machine Chevy Camaro. 360 Dodge motor to a 383 small block Chevy. Trouble off the line for Hodgson. That car gonna stall immediately upon takeoff. She'll pull over to the left and James Dobson will run through to an 11.029 at 115. Problem set in for the dart. And they will push Hodgson back. Attention to the pits, attention to the pits. Vancouver Car Wrap Sportsman to lanes one, two, three, and four. Vancouver Car Wrap Sportsman, second call to lanes one through four. And uh, Rat Torque Systems Super Pro, you are on standby. Rat Torque Systems Super Pro, you're on standby. Well, whatever happened to Hodgson's car, it did not leave anything on the racetrack. We'll see if they could get that car patched up in time for eliminations later this afternoon. David Rastad and Mal Patterson will fire down track. The malfunction Espion, uh, excuse me, the malfunction Albion Tireland Pontiac Acadian will clock at a 10.020 at 132 miles an hour. Rastad's Malibu goes 11.859 at 109.
Brian Havlow goes 9.278 at 147 miles an hour. Rich Dyes was 11.218 at 118. Just heard some insights on what happened to Veronica Hodgson. Uh, no gas. So nothing broke, just uh, no gas. So it'll be an easy fix. That's the good news. They're bringing some fuel over to get that car. And who knows, maybe they'll let her make it a second attempt at qualifying. But I think because she took the tree, possibly not. We'll see what they do about that one. Uh, Ross Hornall takes the Fairmont down track alongside Nick Douglas. Last season's uh, sportsman champion. Taking the Dodge Charger after Hornall. Hornall goes 10.684, 117 miles an hour. Nick Douglas goes 12.233 at 110. Dennis Winding goes 11.617 at 114 for the Shaggy Bel Air. His opponent went 10.473 at 84, but turned on the red light in the process. So far, nobody has come close to getting to Grant Gordon's uh, 003 reaction time to put them to the number one qualifying spot. Robert Zillick or Chillick? It'll be one of the two. Uh, you can feel free to correct me if I'm pronouncing this one wrong. Out of Blaine Washington racing his Dodge Challenger at, from 2009 against Lucas Taggart in the Scat Pack Dodge. Schillick going 10.272 at 134. Lucas Tagger going 11.950 at 114. Bring up Craig Johnson. The Johnson's Customs Exhaust. Wagon going to be going up against Derek Shirk and the Titanium Auto Group Blazer. Double O nine red for Craig Johnson. He'll full follow it up with a ten point five eighty eight at one hundred twenty two. Derek Shirk goes ten point eight three four at one hundred twenty two. Brings up John Tabak and the Rat Torque Systems S ten from nineteen eighty nine. Facing off against Ross Walker in that Chevy two. Double O three with a six five ten thousandths of a second off of Grant Gordon's time. Ross Walker will shoot to the number two qualifying spot with a ten point oh seven five at one hundred thirty one. John Tobacco's ten point three two three at one twenty eight. Bring up Deborah Dalton in the seventy nine Impala, labeled as Mabel. Cassie Tippy will also be racing the sixty five Nova wagon. Red light start for Deborah. Cash tip it was a tenth and a half of the good. 
Dalton goes 11.512 at 113. Cassie Tippy goes 11.434 at 116. Bring it up for Dustin Hunter, racing the Ford Falcon out of Chilliwack. Going up against Loren Schwartz for the Titanium Auto Group above a speed shop. with the one, but it is in the red for the Monte Carlo right lane. Dustin Hunter will beat him there. Goes 9.11 with a six at uh, 146 miles an hour. Schwartz goes 10.06 with a seven at 133. Attention to the pits, attention in the pits. Super Pro, Rat Torch System, Super Pro to lanes one, two, three, and four. Rat Torch System, Super Pro, lanes one, two, three, and four. And then that'll take it right up for Hot Rod to be on standby. Hot Rod on standby. Well, Chris Stone and Jim Banky both fully staged with the tree not coming down. So they'll back them out and try again. Rat Torch Systems, Bucky's been the excavating titanium auto group representing on the wheel standing Barracuda over here at TCS side. Chris Stone for Stone Cold racing in the dart over in the right lane. Wheels up launch for both. 027 and an 036 light. And to the top end, Stone gets there first by seven hundredths. 9.971, 131 miles an hour. Jim Banky goes to 10.057 at 132. Bring up the final pair. Oh, sorry, the first pair. That was the last pair in Bubba Speed Shop Pro Bracket. This will kick off second round of qualifying for Vancouver Car Wrap Sportsman. Eric Brighton and the 79 Fairmont racing Philip Marvette in the Plymouth. Current number one qualifying racks time to beat is an 0.23, also set by Grant Gordon. Of course, remember, all of these bracket classes are uh, qualified based off of reaction time. Super combo qualified based on how close they are to the index and door slammers is going to be the first class that's actually qualified on the overall et they are not anticipated though to be out until may dave copeland and steve bassett for the next pair down the track and well nothing to write home about on either side on the tree attention to the pits attention in the pits rad torch systems super pro lanes one through four that is Rad Torch Systems, Super Pro to lanes one through four. Old Car Center Hot Rod and Mountain View Harley Davidson Motorcycle, you are both on standby. Hot Rod and Motorcycle, you're both on standby for your final qualifying hits. Super Pro to lanes one through four. Brandon Piskasek will bring up the Mustang Fox body while Tyler Dobson brings up the Dead Man Racing Camaro from 1978. Next pair, Sylvia Hookstons in the 66 Ford Mustang to race against Ann Copeland. That last qualified time from Tyler Dobson put him to the number one qualifying spot by just one ten thousandth. He had to beat an 0.23 with a four. His reaction time was an 0.23 with a three. So now Tyler Dobson's 0.23 with a three is the new time to beat for the number one qualifying spot. That's off the reaction time on the tree. 
Rolling lower. Takes up the Meteor. Still nothing on file for this driver in the Lord Kill Lane, but we know it's the Volkswagen Golf. Next pair up, Cassidy Langley racing Bill Wells. Ford Edge going up against the Chevy Malibu for TNT. Bill Wells, 81 years old and still going strong. Over the last 55 years, has raced every single event he could get his hands on. Next up, Eric Hansen with some new sponsorship on the car, as uh, John Back pointed out earlier, thanking Broadway on that car in the dart. Racing Jessica Armstrong for Vadis Garage, Render Racing, Home Master Team, and Road Iron in the Dodge. Kevin McCauley, racing that old school Cutlass, facing off against Sean Langley's Hustler. And that, I believe, will take us to the final pair of Vancouver Car Wrap Sports. Oh, sorry. Two more. Two more pairs. One on the line, Gary Fawcett in the TCS lane in the 19, uh, 1966 Plymouth. He'll face off against Grant Gordon. Now your number two qualifier with just one ten thousandth of a second. And now it is looking even more certain that we'll have a new number one in the form of Tyler Dobson. Attention to the pits, attention to the pits. Old car center hot rod, lanes five and six. Old car center hot rod, lanes five and six. Mountain View Harley Davidson motorcycles to lanes three and four. Mountain View Harley Davidson motorcycles to lanes three and four. Final pair going down track, Mark Ferguson and Nick Douglas. And how about that? Ferguson to the number one qualifying spot. Double O one with a one on the tree, knocking out Dobson's O twenty three with a three. So by just one thousandth of a second, Ferguson, your number one qualifier in Vancouver Car Rap Sportsman, will see them back for first round of eliminations. Tractors go on the track. We'll be down for some track prep. We'll be back with Rad Tour Systems Super Pro.
Attention to the pits, attention to the pits. Once again, we have called Hot Rod to lanes five and six, and we have also called Motorcycle to lanes three and four. That is once again, Motorcycles coming up to lanes three and four for your second and final qualifying hit. Martin Rochelle, bringing it up in that 1978 Chevy Malibu to race against Kevin McNichol. Get the uh, 1967 Chevy Nova from Titanium Auto Group. O31 to an O33 on the tree as they both run down track. McNichol gets there first by half a ten, 9.979. 134 miles an hour. Rochelle goes 10.040 at 128. So with that call for hot rod and motorbikes to the lanes, with hot rod to five and six and bikes to three and four, that should put us with juniors on standby. Once again, that is all junior classes here on standby. Get suited up, get ready to go. Ted Boss and Mike Robinson, pair of roadsters running down track. One from 34, one from 27. Shonigan Trucking, TCS Lincoln to go 8.930 at 148, while Mike Robinson's JBS Equipment and JS Power Sports Machine going to go at a 9.044 at 144. Warren Jacobson brings up his uh, Super Combo Chevy 2 to race against John Jenkins. In the West Coast Building, Restorations, MRI Supply, Chevy S10. Andy Hatton brings up the Grinch and Jason Gibson in the 91 Mustang. Attention in the pits, attention in the pits. Final call, final call for motorcycles. Final call for motorcycles and the final qualifying hit. And we're gonna make first call now for juniors to the lanes. First call for juniors to the lanes. Thunder the one, lightning to two, street to three and four. That is thunder the one, lightning to two, street to three and four. Greg Bodle brings up the 69 first Jan Camaro to race Jan Christensen to the El Gringo Nova. Point six oh one at 160 miles an hour for Rick Modal. Christensen goes 847 with a six at 159. Brings up Craig Johnson at the BC scale. Johnson's Customs Exhaust, Old uh, sorry, uh, Malibu Wagon. Racing Mike Stewart's Super Chicklet, Bucky's Mini Excavating, Chevy 2. Stewart goes 999 with a 6, 133 miles an hour. Craig Johnson goes 10.525 and 122.
Next pairing up, Laurent Schwartz, John DeBack in Super Pro. Titan Amata Group above a speed shop going up against the Rad Toy Systems S10. With a 10.142 at 132 to a 10.314 at 129, that will wrap it up for Rad Torch Systems Super Pro. We will roll to Old Car Center Hot Rod. John Sayer and Glenn Filling have the first pair down track, and Fillingham gets their way out in front. 12.073 at 113 to John Sayer's 19.374 uh, at 71. That'll bring up Dennis Winton and Dustin Hunter. Shaggy Belair versus the Ford Falcon. surprise hunter way out in front 909 with a four 147 miles an hour dennis wendy goes 11.724 at 113. Point six seven two at 127 with Jerry Brabander going 10.624 at 124. Ranchero versus Chevy 2 for that last pass. That brings up Rob Monroe Sr. And Sylvia Hookstons. Senior off and away, and the white knuckle racing BNN Hot Rods gives us racing trans transmission. Horizon made an auto body 31 Model A. Goes 8.72 on 152. Sylvia Hook stands at 12.679 at 106. Attention to the pits, attention to the pits. We've made the call for all juniors of the lanes. Junior Thunder to lane one, Junior Lightning to lane two, and we're going to change Junior Street's lane designations to four and five. So Junior Street, four and five. Bring up Matt Warren of the Linden Service Center. Ford racing against Rob Hodgson's Plymouth. Wheels up high for Matt Warner. Slams back down to earth. He'll run it through with a 10.372 at 127. Rob Hodgson goes 10.570 at 125. So with the juniors to uh, the call for juniors of the lanes, of course that means license and test. You are now on standby. Keith Winterbottom and rolling low in the next pair down track. And 
with that, that'll take up the last uh, pair in Old Car Center Hot Rod of Jim Banky and Chris Stone. The 1968 Stone Cold Racing Dodge Dart will race against the 1967 Wheel Standing Barracuda. into the two-wheelers, Mountain View Harley-Davidson Motorcycles. Just like the first one, that bike having troubles, unable to climb through the gears. Went 003 red on the tree, so Turan stands as the lone qualifier in motorcycles. Next pairing up, well, next class of, I should say, as we leave Mountain View Harley Davidson Motorcycle, will roll into Pete and Industries Junior Thunder. The youngsters will go back at it. Cadence Rodriguez, the first car that went down traffic in Specialty Auto, Ernie Speed Custom and Titanium Auto Group ran an 896 with a 1 at 74 miles an hour. Hunter Thompson for JBS Equipment and Bentley Johnson for Bubble Speed Shop, Lucas Oil and Heatwave Visual. It'll be the next pairing in Junior Thunder as we race to the 8th mile. We roll back into Beaton Industries Junior Thunder, Hunter Thompson, Bentley Johnson, the next pair on the line. So John Tabak has just uh, found his way back up here to the tower. I'm going to go get lunch.
Hey, listen up out there in the pits. We're looking for license and test in lane number six. License and test. We need you in lane number six. So it looks like this will be a single coming up. Emily White, right-hand side of the racetrack, the Lord Co. Lane for White Lightning Racing. Wants to thank Lord Co., Pioneer Truck, TNT, and Walco. Left a little bit early at the top end, 928, 68 miles an hour. That'll set up a pair. Armstrong and Gallant. Owen Armstrong. Left-hand side of the racetrack. Be taking on Hunter Gallant. So Owen Armstrong, left-hand side of the racetrack out of Chilliwack. Hunter Gallant also out of Chilliwack. So Owen carefully inching the, uh, the car forward, lights the top bulb. Hunter Gallant stages the car, now waiting on Owen. He's bumping his way forward. We got four bulbs. Couple of green lights. Hunter Gallant, the quicker of the two, reaches the finish line in 8.39 seconds, doing 77 miles per hour. Owen Armstrong with a 13.73 at 45 miles per hour. So once again, we need license and test in lane number six. License and test, lane number six. Ashton Katnick, left-hand side, goes 1168, 55 miles an hour, while Dallas Jackson in the right lane goes 1619 at 39 miles an hour. How cool is that? Another pair now. Thinking the elder Katnick, Adam Katnick, and Nate Green. Adam Katnick, former champion. Couple of green lights, looking good on the starting line. Katnick leads the way. How about 831 at 62 miles an hour while Nate Green puts an 883 up on the reader board, 72 miles per hour. 
Looks like we're going to finish off Junior Thunder with a single. Wes Armstrong. The older, more experienced of the Armstrong brothers. The Wesley Armstrong out of Chilliwack wants to thank the Badass Garage along with the Home Masters team. Turns it red by just three thousandths of a second. But hey, we're in time trials. If you're going to turn it red, it may as well be during time trials. So I was mistaken, looks like we've got uh, another pair of Junior Thunder cars getting themselves staged up, ready to go. So Alex Green over in the right lane has got the free stage bulb lit. Nash Gallant. Left-hand side of the racetrack also lights the top bulb. Now got three lit, four bulbs lit. Here comes the tree. One red light, one green light. Alex Green with a 12.05, 53 miles an hour in the Lord Co. Lane. Nash Gallant with a 12.82 at 35 miles an hour in the TCS Lane. Looks like this will be uh, the first of our lightning cars. Lincoln Shirk. Titanium Auto Group. Along with Rad Torque Systems. JBS Equipment. And JS Power Sports. Well, four bulbs lit, or, well, two bulbs on the single, but uh, no tree. So we'll try this again. Lincoln Shirk stages the car. There goes the tree, green light. At the eighth mile finish line, 780. 82 miles an hour for Lincoln Shirk. That will bring up a pair. C.L. Gagnon and McKenna Thompson. McKenna Thompson, right-hand lane. Local girl from Mission. 
CL in the left lane from Qualicum on the island. Also wants to thank Rad Torque Systems, the Titanium Auto Group, and SP. What is SP? Good question. So McKenna, 791 at 81 miles an hour. CL, 795 at 82 miles an hour. Hey, attention in the pits, attention in the pits, Pro Bracket, Pro Bracket, this is your standby call for round one of eliminations, Pro Bracket, you are on standby, Pro Bracket, start getting ready to go, this is your standby call for round one of eliminations, Abby White and Nick Bond, Nick Bond, 793. Abby White getting there first with a 779. And that sets us up for our next pair. So we'll make a final call for license and test. License and test, this is your final call. Lane number six. Isabella Marshall. Left-hand side of the racetrack, down from Vernon. I'd like to thank the Silva Auto World, Canco, quality manufactured homes. And in the right lane, Lexi Winterbach. Driver's doing a good job on the starting line, 021 to 033. At the finish line, Isabella there ahead of Lexi, 785 to 791. So we got a junior licensing here today. So essentially, she's just staging the car and rolling it out of the beams. So it appears the uh, junior may have dropped a little bit of fluid down there. The uh, starting line staff is all over it. Oh, 
So once again, Pro Bracket, you are on standby. Pro Bracket, you are on standby for round number one. So again, starting line crew just cleaning up a tiny, tiny little spill down there at the starting line. Looks like Wally's in the tractor, ready to give it a little drag, and then uh, I'm assuming we'll roll in to the final qualifier for Junior Street. So I do believe the track is good to go. Junior Street should be rolling into the water.
So, first pair of junior streetcars in the water box. Riker Towson, left hand side out of Abbotsford, 1987. GMC 1500. And Sophia Getz out of Kamloops. Now, my screen's telling me it's a 1994 Mustang, however. It does not appear to be a Mustang. Looks like a power stroke Ford. Hey, listen up out there in the pits. Well, first off, Nolan, Nolan, we need Nolan to the tower. Because I'm going to make the call right now for Pro Bracket to lanes one, two, three, and four. Pro Bracket, this is your call to the staging lanes for round number one. And Nolan has arrived. I will be back. Tyler Smith goes 0222 red, runs it out with a 10.905 at 64 miles an hour. Josephine Smith goes 10.492 at 69 miles an hour. Dallas Nassi takes the BC Dragon, Snorkum Canada overtime. Honda Civic to race against Jacob Stolby and the 2022 AT4 pickup. Stobie goes 10.11 with a 1, 67 miles an hour. Dallas Nassi was 12.41 at 57. Takes up the next pair, James McNeil in the 2013 Nissan pickup to race Jordan Ormsby and that 94 Pontiac Firebird. McNeil hopping off and away. He'll run that one to the eighth mile with a 10.032 at 68. Jordan Lawrence was bested on the tree, but has the top end charge. 9.466 at 78. Bring up Jenna and Taryn Monroe. Chevy pickup for the 2022 class champion over there in the Lord Kill Lane. Changing up a little bit from the car we just saw run in the first qualifying hit. Jenna Monroe. In the 2000 Chevy over here, TCS side. Now this will be... This will be the final round of Peter's Industries Junior Street Qualifying. Then we'll roll into some test hits.
Monroe ran a 9.843 at 72 miles an hour. Jenna Monroe at 10.576 at 67. Bring up Emma Debris Coos, still licensing that dragster. Again, Emma Debris Coos, having just graduated from Junior Lightning in 2023, making her first hits in a full-size car. Debris shuts it off at about the eighth mile mark. No surprise there. Goes 6.254 at 99. And then that takes us to the front engine drag, sir, once again. Last time we saw this front end dragster try to make a hit, it uh, shut off just past the 60 foot and kind of coasted down the rest of the racetrack. Once again, with Bubba Speed Shop Pro Bracket, uh, you should be in the lanes by now for your first round of eliminations. And with that, we're putting Sportsman on standby. Sportsman, Vancouver Car Wrap Sportsman, this is your standby call. On and off the throttle and finally gives it up about uh, halfway between the 330 and the 8th mile mark. That will once again put us down for track prep. First round eliminations coming to you.
First eliminating pass of the 2024 season. Headed up by Grant Gordon and the Four Cycles Incorporated Dodge Dart. Alongside Lorenz Schwartz. And the Titanium Auto Group. Bubba Speed Shop. Chevy Monte Carlo. Right side. 1194 dialed into a 1009. Two green bulbs are lit. Schwartz in hot pursuit of Grant Gordon. And it'll be Schwartz who will be the first driver eliminated in 2024. Grant Gordon only one thou off the dial. Bram Cassie Tippy in the Chevy Nova. Dialed at 1190 or 1145. Trace Veronica Hodgson out of 1397. Now in the Volkswagen. After Veronica Hodges dodged Dart, went kaput. Red light start for Tippy. Go 17th thou, right on the tree, and that will give a freebie to Veronica Hodgson. who will take that streetcar in round two. Next pair, Ross Hornall. In the 78 Fairmont out at 1066, racing Rich Dyes in the Transporters Logistics Nova dialed at 1123. Red light star for Ross Hornall. As Hornall will go. Uh, Bit too quick on the jump, and Rich dies. Moves on to round two. Attention in the pits, attention in the pits. Sportsman to the lanes. Vancouver Car Wrap Sportsman. We need you to lanes one through four. Sportsman to the lanes. Cassidy Langley racing against Rob Davey. Ford Edge versus Chevy Chevelle. Pair of red lights on this one, but Cassidy Langley was the worst of the two, which gives the win to Rob Davey. 039 red to an 025, and Rob Davey moves on to round two. Dennis Winton brings up the Shaggy Bel Air, dialed at 1162 to race Mal Patterson. And the Albion Thailand Malfunction Acadian dialed at 1006. Two green lights, Patterson and Hopper suit of Winton. Quarter mile, light up the wind light for the Lord Kill Lane. Matt Patterson driving around Winton, got there first by six hundredths. Next up, David Rastad dialed that 1187 in the 1980 Chevy Malibu. He'll race Dustin Hunter, dialed at 908 in the Ford Falcon. Hunter had to be patient there, and we'll see if his patience is rewarded. It was double all one on the tree and quarter mile. Rastak goes under, trying to keep it out in front. Wouldn't have mattered anyway. Hunter got there way in front. Smoke Rastad by a tenth on the tree with the double all one reaction time. Deborah Dalton brings up the Chevy Pala, labeled Mabel. James Dobson in hot pursuit. The damn man racing Ron's engine machine, Camaro. 
Top end of the quarter mile. Oh, breakout for James Dobson. Goes under by 28 thousandths. When 1062 on the 1065 dial, Deborah Dalton moves on to round two. Jim Banke for Rad Torque Systems. Buckman is excavating in Titanium Auto Group. Racing against Craig Johnson for BC Scale Johnson Customs Exhaust in the Malibu Wagon. Two green lights. As Craig Johnson trying to stay out in front of the wheel, standing Barracuda and does so. Craig Johnson way out in front. Jim Banky went under by 14 thou. Johnson moves on to round two. So once again, attention to the pits, attention in the pits. Sportsman, you've been called to lanes one through four for first round eliminations. Sportsman, your second call to the lanes for first round of eliminations. John Tabak's Chevy S10 in hot pursuit of Daryl Tippy. Quarter mile. Tabak moving on to round two. Gets there first by just nine one thousandth of a second, and it was only five thou off the dial. Lucas Taggart. Next one up in the Scat Pack Dodge. Racing against Brian Heffel. 1205 to a 927 in the Vega. Scat Pack Dodge will leave first. Heffel had to be patient, waiting on the line by almost three seconds. Now trying to run him down. Closing. And he'll make the pass as Lucas Taggart heard him coming, went under the dial by half a tenth, trying to keep it in front. Ross Walker comes up next, the 10.08. In the Chevy 2, dialed in against the 1095 to Walter Johnson in the Chevelle. Walker chasing down Johnson and makes the pass. Ross Walker knocks out the Chevelle in round number one. Classic Ford versus Chevy battle. Six stroker Fox body facing off against the 414 small block Chevy Nova. Both racers off on green lights. Bobby Ehlers gets there first, makes the pass by just two thousandths of a second. Derek Shirk, next one up in the Titanium Auto Group. Blazer dialed at 1083, racing against Sean Langley, dialed at 1167. Breakout for Sean Langley. Got there first, went under the dial in the process. Derek Shirk will move on to the next round. Chris Stone next up at the Stone Cold Racing Dart to face off against Steve Baskerville at the Volkswagen Golf R. Again, another three-second margin. 
10.03 seconds on the uh, tree. Left side, right side. Dialed at 13 seconds. And Baskerville turns on the red line by just six thousandths of a second. Chris Stone with the freebie to round two. Next up, Robert Schillick in the 2009 Challenger. Dialed at 10.50 to race Ralph Ehlers in the Junkyard Dog Fox Body. Dialed at 10.70. Trouble for Schillick trying to get that car in a gear. But we'll hang on. Ralph Ehlers knocked out in round one to a newcomer. The upset goes the way of the challenger. Nick Douglas going to be the single by run in uh, Bubba's Beat Shop Pro Bracket. That wraps up first round of qualifying. And uh, Justin Bond going to be taking Colton Morin's new dragster for a test run. So Colton Morin making the next step, the big step from junior dragster to a big car. And there we see it down there on the starting line. Justin Bond behind the wheel right now. Just gonna uh, help him shake it down, so to speak. Hey, listen up out there in the pit. Super Pro, Rad Torque System, Super Pro. This is your call to the lanes for round one. You are on a ladder. And we'll give a standby call to Hot Rod. Hot Rod, this is your standby call. So, Bond. With a nice eight sixteen and a buck sixty five. All looked good. So again, we'll make the call for Super Pro. Super Pro. We need you in the staging lane. Super Pro, come on down. It's time for round one. And hot rod. You're on standby. Standby call going out to Hot Rod. So first pair of sportsman cars. Look like this. It's going to be Dave Copeland and it's going to be Gary Fawcett. Fawcett in the right lane. Behind the wheel is Plymouth Valiant. Dave, Dave Copeland leaves first. Turns it red by 96 thou. Gary Fawcett had a reaction time of 0 0.144, so he was there for the taking. Finish line, Fawcett goes 91 on his 96 dial. Dave Copeland was dialed well, 16.14 on the 16.12. So that'll set up our next pair, Brendan Picasic and Eric Britton. Britton in the right lane. Behind the wheel of the Fairmont wagon. With a 200 cubic inch straight six. Dials 1968. K 
Can't dial much slower in Sportsman. Breaks out by quite a bit. Windlight going to Brendan in the left lane. Goes 13-10 on the 13-04. Well, this Windlight was on the whole time. As Eric turned it red, I didn't notice that. Now Phil Marvez. Multi-time past champion here at Mission Raceway Park in the class of sportsman. Left side of the racetrack, dialed in at 1180. And Copeland in the right lane, dialed 1512. Out in front and trying to stay there, but here comes Phil in the duster. And Ann Copeland is moving on. Marvettes gets to the stripe first by 16 thou. Or sorry, Ann Copeland gets to the stripe first by 16 thou. She wins the double breakout. Next pair now, Tyler Dobson and Kevin McCauley. McCauley in the right lane down 11.68 behind the wheel. The black cutlass, Tyler Dobson. Dialed 11.81 in the dark green Camaro. So a couple of green lights. One of them was really quite green. Tyler Dobson moves on. Goes 11.90 on the 11.81. Good enough. Well, I guess I should be on my way, Nolan. Got a round to go run. Picks up our next pair of Roland Lowen and Eric Hansen Meteor versus the Broadway Dart. A pair of green balls at 1277 to a 1270. Almost no difference in the two times as they'll run it out to the quarter and Roland Lowen gets there with the wind light as Eric Hansen breaks out by two hundredths. Grant Gordon takes up the four cycle customs uh, dart to race Steve Baskerville in the Volkswagen Golf R with that two liter turbo engine. 1194 to a 13 second time. A pair of green lights and that Volkswagen a little bit sluggish off the hitch. Grant Gordon already pulling alongside. And sure enough, Baskerville breaks out by over a tenth and a half. Grant Gordon moves on to round two. Next up is Cassidy Langley in the 2011 Ford Edge to race Bill Wells in the Chevy Malibu. Wells having to be very, very patient here on the starting line. As he now chases off after the slower edge. Breakout for Cassidy Langley. Heard Wells coming. And went under. Jessica Armstrong next up, racing Mark Ferguson, Dodge versus Firebird. The Badness Garage Render Racing Home Masters team and Road Iron Machine is away and will be away in the round two as Ferguson couldn't be patient enough. Red lights by 17 thou. Armstrong cruising through to the top end, not wanting to take too much risk. And that will leave another pair, Nick Douglas 
in that uh, 2023 Dodge Charger. Ford versus Dodge, new versus old. The Super B Charger is out first. Sean Langley trying to run him down. A race for the quarter. And at the quarter, it'll be Nick Douglas. Double breakout. Sean Lang, the only under by 82 thou. Nick Douglas, only under by 3 thou. Sylvia Hookstons will be then the by run. The final uh, car in the 19 car sportsman field. And that will do it for Vancouver Car Wrap Sportsman believe we'll be doing a little bit of dragging before we'll move on into Rad Torque Systems Super Pro.
Attention in the pits. Attention in the pits. Well, more attention in the staging lane. So all the Super Pro folks gathered out back there. Um, there is going to be a new Super Pro ladder that is about to be posted. Uh, Shelby does apologize for the inconvenience, but there is going to be an updated ladder with corrections that uh, will be posted momentarily. So once again, apologies for that inconvenience, and we'll hopefully be getting you guys down track shortly.
first pair in Rad Torque Systems Super Pro decided on the starting line as Andy Hatton goes fourth, Thou Red giving it up in favor of John Jenkins. Bring up Rick Modell in the first gen Camaro to race defending champion Jan Christensen in the Nova. Both drivers away on green lights. And the defending champion threw it around two as Jan Christensen moves on. Rick Modell knocked out in round one. Attention in the pits, attention in the pits. Hot Rod to lanes one, two, three, and four. Old Car Center Hot Rod. Lanes one through four. Old Car Center Hot Rod. Lanes one, two, three, and four. Ted Buss and the Shawnigan Trucking Ford Roadster dialed in at 892. Mike Stewart in the Super Chicklet Bucky's Mini Excavating Chevy 2 dialed in at 1021. Stewart and Buss firing down track. And a breakout for Mike Stewart gives it the way of the roadster. Ted Buss moves on to round two. Bring up John Tabak and Craig Johnson. The Rag Torque Systems S10 over here in the left lane has had some luck today. Already made it through to round two in Bubba's Beach Shop Pro Bracket, trying to double it up in Super Pro, racing Craig Johnson. In the BC scale, Johnson's Customs Exhaust, Oldsmobile Cutlass. Two tenths separate them on the tree. Drivers away on the green. John Tabak trying to knock out Craig Johnson. Johnson out in front. Double breakout. John Tabak, the lesser offender by just three thou. Craig Johnson was 24 thou under. Tabak, only 21 thou under.
Kevin McNichol. The next one firing down track with Mike Robinson in hot pursuit. And Mike Robinson makes the pass. 11th out, the margin of victory. Kevin McNichol going to be sent packing. Rochelle trying to keep it out in front of Jason Gibson. Can he hang on with the 006 slide? Yes, he can. 008, the margin of victory. Martin Rochelle will knock out Jason Gibson and move to round two. That brings up Warren Jacobson in the 1087, uh, sorry, in the Chevy 2 dial the 1087 to race Lorenz Schwartz in the 1983 Monte Carlo dial the 1007 for Titanium Auto Group and Bubba Speed Shop. Double 06, the margin of victory as Lorenz Schwartz drives around Warren Jacobson by about a bumper at the top end. That wraps up Rack Torque Systems Super Pro. Our next class will be Old Car Center Hot Rod. Attention the pits, attention in the pits. Motorcycles to the lanes, motorcycles to the lanes. Motorcycles to the lanes for your uh, first round of eliminations and what I suspect might be the last round of eliminations. We'll also put all junior classes on standby. So motorcycles, a.k.a. Tom Turan to the lanes and juniors on standby.
Old Car Center hot rod rolls under the bridge. Bill Halicki in the bad example, Ranchero Dow, then at 10 seconds flat, will be rolling up against Roland Lowen in the 1955 Meteor, dialed at 1279. Two green bulbs as we fire up towards the top end of the racetrack. And Roland Lowen goes double 05 for a margin of victory, 12.081 at 102 miles an hour. Knocks out Bill Hillick in round one. Tension in the pits, tension in the pits. Juniors to the lanes, juniors to the lanes. Thunder to one, lightning to two, street to three and four. Thunder the one, lightning to two, street to three and four. Rob Monroe Senior Racing, Glenn Fillingham. White Knuckle Racing, BNN Hot Rods, Gibson Racing, Transmission, Verizon Band and Auto Body Ford Roadster, gonna turn on the red light and gives it to Fillingham's AMX to go to round two. Tough break for the 1931 Roadster as he has uh, put down and out early on. Stone going to race John Sayer and problem set in for Sayer off the hitch as Chris Stone will take home the win for round two. Launches with those wheels high in the air. Trying to outlast Rob Hodgson. Double breakout. Matt Warner takes it. Only 16th out under. Went 1039 on the 1041. Rob Hodgson, 300 under. So how are you, Nolan? Turn my microphone off, but doing well. <laughs> Sorry about that. So Dustin Hunter and Dennis Winton out there now. Hunter left lane, Winton in the right lane, Winton way out in front, and he's way under. Goes 1160 on the 1166. Had the advantage on the starting line. Just got a little too greedy up there at the finish line. So Dustin Hunter will move on to round number two. And that'll bring up Jim Benke and Jerry Braybander. Couple of green lights. Braybander goes dead four. 10.57 with a four on the 57 dial. Jim Benke under the 10.12 prediction by a couple of hundred. So Jerry B moving on to round number two. Yeah. Keith Winterbottom. Man, those are some interesting quarter panels. Creative way to make room for tires. 
Winterbottom rowing through the gears. Sylvia, right lane in the Mustang, out front and trying to stay there. Oh, she goes under. The 1267 dial by 11 thousandths, taken a quarter second at the stripe. Out! So, Winterbottom. It's going all right, I'll take it. So Tom Turan, our lone motorcycle competitor for the day, goes 871 on a single left-hand lane. I guess that was the final. So just happen to have a uh, Super Pro round two ladder in front of me. So Loren Schwartz will get a single. And it'll be uh, John Jenkins taking on Mr. Bus. It'll be Jan Christensen taking on Mr. Robinson. And Martin Rochelle and myself will square off. So we got our junior dragsters in the lanes. They're getting set to go for their first round of competition. <laughs> you need the tall setting.
So here we go, round one, Junior Thunder. First pair, I was gonna say in the water, but one of them's in the water, one of them's almost in the water. So first pair looks like this, Emily White and Hunter Gallant. Hunter Gallant in the right lane, dialed 895. He'll give up the starting line handicap to Emily. Emily dialed in at 9.28 seconds. Emily White, local from right here in Mission. Wants to thank Walco Industries, TNT, Pioneer Truck, along with Lord Co Auto Parts. Hunter Gallant from Chilliwack. Hunter. Very grateful to his sponsors as well. BDL Automotive, Super Steve's Tires, Diversified Metalworks, Rocket Coatings, and Paint by Rodrigue. Uh, attention the pits, attention the pits. Junior Street, Junior Street. We need Junior Street to the lanes, please. Junior Street, come on down. Emily White turns it red by eight thou. But man, Hunter Gallant was ready to go. Let me tell you, double O three on the starting line for Hunter. Absolutely mows down the tree. Then goes 989 on the 895 dial, so uh, not really sure what happened to the ET, but he is moving on to round number two. Emily White, just to, to rub it in a little bit more, goes dead five on the 928 dial. Attention the pits, license and test. This is a standby call for license and test. License and test, standby call. So Hunter Thompson runs a little too quick. And I mean just a little. Two thou under the number. So Alex Green will move on to round number two. Hunter Thompson with a slight advantage on the starting line. So Alex Green will be coming back for round number two. Next pair now making their way towards the beams. We've got Wesley Armstrong and Dallas Jackson. Dallas Jackson. 
just across the bridge in Abbotsford. In the right lane, dialed in at 1620. Oh, Dallas Jackson out in front. Wesley Armstrong, the uh, quicker of the two cars, trying to run him down. And at the finish line, it is Dallas Jackson with the wind light on. 1621 on the 1620 dial. Wesley had the starting line advantage, but at the finish line runs too quick. Hey, listen up at the pits. Attention in the pits. License and test. License and test. Come on down to lane number six. License and test. Come on down to lane number six. And with that, we'll give a standby call to Pro Bracket. Pro Bracket. This is your standby call for round number two. Now, Owen Armstrong. We'll line up with Adam Katnick. Adam Katnick in the right lane out of Maple Ridge. Dialed 890. I believe just about as quick as you can go in Junior Thunder. So Owen Armstrong dialed 1390. Adam Katnick will be moving on. Gets to the stripe first and is safe on the 890 dial with a 908. Now Nate Green and Cadence Rudrig. Cadence in the right lane. Cadence dialed 892. It'll be just the slightest of handicaps on the starting line as Nate Green is dialed in at 890. So Cadence moves on, 895 on the 892, good enough to get it done. Nate Green under the 890 prediction with an 886. So Cadence with the starting line advantage. She had the better light. Now Jack Green and Bentley Johnson ready to face off here in round number one. Bentley Johnson dialed at 890 over there in the right lane. Jack Green dialed 1395. So just a little over half a second. It'll be how long Bentley Johnson has to hang around on the starting line. What am I saying? Five seconds. And go. So Jack Green way out in front, but here comes Bentley. 
So Bentley gets to the stripe first, but in doing so, runs under. Jack Green is moving on to round number two. So we'll make a final call for license and test. Final call for license and test. Again, Pro Bracket, you're on standby. So our final pair of Junior Thunder cars looks like this. It'll be Nash Gallant in the left lane and Ashton Katnick in the right lane. Ashton will be the quicker of the two, dialed in at 11.90. And Nash Gallant dialed 12.64. Both drivers light the top bulb. Now we got three bulbs lit and four. Here we go. Couple of green lights. We're going to decide this one at the finish line. Ashton Katnick will be moving on to round number two. Had the advantage on the starting line and ran closer to the number at the finish line, getting there first. So we'll go ahead and make the call now for Pro Bracket. Pro Bracket, bring them down. Pro Bracket, this is your call to the lanes for round number two, and you are on a ladder. Pro Bracket, come on down to the staging lanes. Pro Bracket, bring them down. Well, Nolan, you know what that means. I'm uh, leaving it in your capable hands, but I will be back. Isabella Marshall going red on the tree in McKenna Thompson. We'll move on to round number two with a freebie there. Marshall going nine hundredths of a second red. Bring up Lincoln Shirk and Nick Bond. Two past champions. Nick Bond, the defending champion. Lincoln Shirk, champion of the year before. Seven ninety to a seven ninety three. It's going to be practically a dead heat. Two champion goes red by 14 thou. Nick Bond, your defending champion. 
into round two. Tough break there for Nick, uh, sorry, for Lincoln Shirk. CL Gagnon brings it up in the Lorco lane with the Rad Torque Systems and Titanium Auto Group machine. Down at 790. Gagnon, her opponent breaking out by six hundredths. Next up, Abigail White for Lorco Auto Parts, Pioneer Truck and Trailer and Walco Industries, dialed at 790. Alexi Winterbottom for uh, Hobo Racing and Bowtie Ventures, dialed at 791. Won't be able to tell the difference between the head starts getting out of the gate. Lights all around, and another breakout in Junior Lightning. Abigail White going two hundredths under Lexi Winterbottom into round two. That wraps up first round of Junior Lightning. We'll see them back for the semifinals, and that will bring up a licensing junior.
Tension in the pits, tension in the pits. Final call for Bubba Speed Shop Pro Bracket. Final call for Bubba Speed Shop Pro Bracket. Final call. Moving on to Peden Industries Junior Street for first round of eliminations. Dallas Nassi takes off first in the overtime Honda Civic. Sophia gets the Ford F-250, that diesel pickup trying to run her down. Eighth mile, gets around her. 11th now, goes the way of Sophia Getz. Josephine Smith bringing up the Zapstrap Racing Chevy pickup dial to 1050 to race Jordan Ormsby in the 1994 Pontiac Firebird dial at 937. Wheel spin for the Chevy pickup. Ormsby in pursuit after Josephine Smith. And a breakout by just one stinking thou for Josephine Smith gives it the way of Jordan Ormsby. Tyler Smith, your defending champion, went almost undefeated last season. And his Zapps Drive Racing uh, Chevy F, uh, sorry, Chevy 1500 Racing Riker Towson in the GMC 500. 1093 to a 917. Pair of green ones. Both pickups charging to the eighth mile. Double breakout and Tyler Smith, the defending champ. After taking eight out of almost 10 wins last season, knocked out in round one of the season opener. <laughs> Jacob Stolby <laughs> dialed in at a 10-10 for the 2022 AT4 Racing Terra Monroe. At a 980. Two more green lights. And it'll be Terry Monroe driving around Jacob Stolby to put himself into round two. Bringing up Jenna Monroe. Jenna Monroe, 
going to break out and gives the win to James McNeil in the right lane. Wrap it up for Pete and Industries Junior Street. Some test passes coming on up. Emma Debris Coos. Making another licensing hit, and then the front engine dragster will be back up after. Attention in the pits, attention in the pits. Sportsman, Vancouver Car Wrap Sportsman, back to the lanes. We need Vancouver Car Wrap Sportsman. Back to lanes one, two, three, and four. Lifts out of a thousand feet, went 799 to get it to that thousand foot mark. This car's had a bit of trouble trying to get down the racetrack these last two hits. Uh, first time it didn't even make it to 330 feet. This time it made it about halfway to the 330 and the eighth. Hello. Seeing if it'll be any better this time around. Still not having an ideal run for the front engine dragster. As Shaylin Svetek shutting it off past eight, the eighth mile mark. So we're going to be down for a little bit more track prep. And uh, Bubba Speed Shop Pro Bracket will be coming back to you in just a few moments.
All right, Bubba Speed Shop Pro Bracket, getting back to it. Dustin Hunter dialed in at a 9.09. Racing against Rich Dyes. Dialed at 11.23. For transport of logistics in the Nova. Two green lights. And it is a breakout for Rich Dye. He's got there first, but Dustin Hunter will take home the wind light. Attention to the pits, attention to the pits. Super Pro and Hot Rod, you're on standby. Super Pro and Hot Rod, you are both on standby. Deborah Dalton in the Impala labeled Mabel. Goes red on the tree, and Mal Patterson will take the Albia Thailand Malfunction Pontiac Acadia to round three. John to back. Going up against Veronica Hodgson. Hodgson, of course, having that Dodge Dart break early on. So now in a Volkswagen port wagon. John to back in hot pursuit, getting way out in front and takes home the win. So Veronica Hodgson knocked out in round two. John Tabak is through to round three. Brian Heffel will now race the Vega dialed at 929. To Lorenz Schwartz in the Titanium Auto Group and Bubba Speed Shop, Chevy Monte Carlo, dialed in at 1009. Heffel turns it red. 17th foul. Puts Lorenz Schwartz through to round three. Attention in the pits, attention in the pits. Super Pro, we need Super Pro to the lanes. Super Pro to the lanes. That is Rat Torque System, Super Pro to the lanes. Robert Schillick, trying to see if he can uh, best Chris Stone, one of the best in the local uh, racing scene. Oh, he got there first, but went under by 15 hundredths. Tenth and a half, and that gives it to Chris Stone. Tough break. Jillick had a 003 light, so I absolutely smoked him on the tree. Yeah. Rob Davey will bring up the Chevelle, dialed at 1030. The race, Ross Walker, dialed at 1008. Chevelle versus Chevy 2. Wheels up, whoa, boy, Rob Davey getting close to the center line, way out of the groove. Gets it back in the power, trying to outlast Ross Walker. Got there first, but goes under in the process. Ross Walker moving on to the next round. Wild run for Rob Davey. Next up, Derek Shirk facing off against Nick Douglas. Titanium Auto Group Blazer versus 2023 Dodge Charger. Down to 1230. Red. 
red light star for Derek Shirk. And in fact, red lights a pair. But Derek Shirk was 16th now red. Douglas only red by 001. Douglas moving on to the next round. Got lucky on that one. Craig Johnson next up for the BC Scale Johnson's Customs Exhaust Malibu Wagon to race Bobby Ehlers in the six stroker Ford Mustang. Once again, we have called Super Pro to the lanes. Super Pro, you have been called to the staging lanes for your next round of eliminations. Rad Torque Systems, you should be making your way down to the lane. Rad Torque Systems, Super Pro. Bobby Ehlers trying to keep it uh, around Craig Johnson. Separate by one thousand on the tree, and Craig Johnson knocked out of pro bracket. Bobby Ehlers moving on to round three. Brandon Piskasek, the next driver up of the 1990 Mustang to race Tyler Dobson for Dem Man Racing's Camaro. Down at 1181 to Piskasek, 1306. Racing to the quarter mile. Dobson making the pass, gets around Brandon Piskasek. Bill Wells, raising the TNT Chevy Malibu, facing off against Jessica Armstrong, who's already off and away. Wells having to be very patient, a five second difference on the starting tree with a head start. Wells trying to chase down Armstrong, makes the pass. Jessica Armstrong could not stay out in front. Bill Wells is through to round three. Attention to the pits, attention in the pits. Hot rod to the lanes, hot rod to the lanes. Old car center hot rod to the lanes. Sylvia Hoogstens bests the Meteor by seven thousandths of a second. Put that 66 Mustang through to round three. Next up, Ann Copeland to race against Grant Gordon, your number three qualifier.
Grant Gordon seeing if he can get around Ann Copeland. Running down track. The Subaru trying to keep it out in front of the dart. Can't do it. Grant Gordon makes the pass by 5 thou for the victory at the top end. That wraps up second round of Upper Speed Shop Pro Bracket. I am miscorrected as there's one car still left. And while that buy run runs, we're going to call Warren Jacobson. Warren Jacobson in Super Pro. We need you in the lanes ASAP. Warren Jacobson to the lanes. We need you there now. We are going to cancel the call on Warren Jacobson. So Warren Jacobson, the call for you has just been canceled. Nick Douglas will be uh, the last pair down with Gary Fawcett, the 1224 dial at 1393. Final pair in Vancouver Car Wrap Sportsman. Gary Fawcett off and away, Nick Douglas in hot pursuit. And top end, Douglas moving on. Garrett Fawcett going home. We're set for Rad Torch Systems. Super Pro now. Quickest and fastest class of the weekend. Ted Buss brings it up with the Shonigan Truck and Roadster, dialed at 896. John Jenkins racing in the West Coast Building Restorations and MRI Supply Chevy S10, 896 to a 1047. starting line to put it bluntly talk about getting drilled Ted Boss with a 7 tenth of a second reaction time John Jenkins will take an easy win to round two but around three my apologies Martin Rochelle We'll bring up the Chevy Malibu, down to 1007, racing John to back in the S10, down to 1033. Pair of green ones. As racing to the corner, Martin Rochelle going to move on to round three. John to back, sent packing and super pro.
Jan Christensen and Mike Robinson, the next pair up. The El Gringo Nova to race against the JBS Quibbon and JS Power Sports Ford Roadster. Robinson will take out the defending champion, Jen Christensen. Going to be uh, packing it up for today. Mike Robinson by 16 down moves on to round three. Bring out the bye, Lorenz Schwartz. Attention to pits, attention to the pits. Motorcycle, back to the lane. Motorcycle, back to the lane for a test hit. Ten, twelve with a one at 132 miles an hour for Lorenz Schwartz. Close it out for Old Car Center. Uh, sorry for Rad Torch System Super Pro. Next up will be Old Car Center Hot Rod. Speaking of Hot Rod, attention to the pits, attention to the pits. Hot Rod, you should already be in the lanes. Hot Rod, you should already be there. We've caught you twice, we'll call you thrice. Final call for Old Car Center Hot Rod to get to the lanes. So Tom Turan back for one more test pass in his uh, GSXR, dubbed the Kraken. This bike's been struggling to get some speed in it all afternoon. The last, uh, the first two qualifying hits he had, he didn't really even make it a half track before having to shut it off. Last pass, he made it to about a thousand feet. Then the bike sputtered and he had to cut it off. We'll see if it'll be any better this time around. That bike just cannot get through the gears smoothly. He's lucky that he's only racing by himself this afternoon, but uh, if he gets any competition later in the season, he'll have to make sure that bike's tuned up.
first pair up at Old Car Center Hot Rod. Matt Warner brings out the Linden Service Center Ford to face off against Keith Winterbottom in the Camaro. 1038 to a 969. Carrying those wheels past 60 feet, and Keith Winterbottom goes red by 11th thou. Matt Warner moves on to round two, round three. Attention to the pits, attention to the pits. Juniors to the lanes, juniors to the lanes. You know the drill. Thunder to one, lightning to two, street to three and four. Thunder to one, lightning to two, street to three and four. Next pair up, Glenn Fillingham and the 1968 AMX dialed at 1210. Racing Roland Lowen in the 1955 Meteor dialed at 1277. Twelve, seven, eight, with an eight for Roland Lowe, and we'll take him into round number three. Stone launches first with the Stone Cold Racing Dar dialed at 10 seconds exactly. Dustin Hunter chasing him down with that 912 dial. Quarter mile. Dustin Hunter by about six hundredths. We'll move on into the third round. Attention to the pits, attention to the pits. Juniors to the lanes, juniors to the lanes once again. Thunder to one, lightning to two, street to three and four. Thunder one, lightning two, street to three and four. As Jerry Brabander gets set to fire down Farmer Lane. Takes that by run in the old car center hot rod. And I believe that sets us up for the semifinals. We're also going to put Pro Bracket on standby. Bubba Speed Shop, Pro Bracket, you are on standby. It's nice and quiet. We're also going to make the call for any drivers looking for license or test hits to come back to the lanes. License and test cars, come back to the lanes for your next round. You'll be up in lane five.
Attention in the pits, attention in the pits. Junior Street, Peter Industries, Junior Street, we're looking for you. Peter Industries, Junior Street, we need you to the lanes. Attention to the pits, attention in the pits. Bubba Speed Shop, Pro Bracket, to the lanes, please. Bubba Speed Shop, Pro Bracket, we need you to the lanes.
First pair up in Pete and Industries Junior Thunder for round two of eliminations, the quarterfinals. Light start for Hunter Gallant. Had to be patient and couldn't be patient enough. Jack Green taking out Hunter Gallant as Gallant goes 29 thou red. Attention the pits, tension in the pits. Pro and sportsman, pro and sportsman, you're both on standby. Pro and sportsman, you're both on standby. Dallas Jackson and Cadence Rodriguez, the next pair up in Junior Thunder. Jackson off and away for the DKO Hot Rods, Martin Dragster. The Ken Specialty Auto, Ernie Speed Custom, Titanium Auto Group, Creative Dragster, having to be patient. Been released. Rodriguez chasing down Jackson. Eighth mile. Breaks out. Not like it would have mattered. Dallas Jackson got there first and turns on the wind light. Attention to the pits, attention to the pits. Bumper Speed Shop Pro Bracket. Short standby call for you as we're going to send you to the lanes. That is Bumper Speed Shop Pro Bracket. Come on down to the lanes. Bring up Adam Katnick and Ashton Katnick, the Katnick brothers going at it. TK Performance, the lower quarter parts represented in both lanes. Adam Kanig, your 2022 points champion. Two green lights. Adam Canning chasing down his brother Ashton. Car sputtering, trying to get it there, and he does. Adam Canning making the pass on Ashton, going for the win. That brings up your final car in Junior Thunder, Alex Green for Global Containers Limited. It's out at 12.05, we'll have the bye. Alex Green with the bye run, turns on the red light, but he will advance regardless. Once again, we have called Bubba Speed Shop Pro Bracket to the lanes. Bubba Speed Shop Pro Bracket, please make your way back down to the staging lanes.
First pair up in Junior Lightning for the semifinals. Nick Bond and McKenna Thompson. JBS equipment represented in both sides. Nick Bond with a really big red light there. Sees McKenna Thompson through to the final. Went red by almost a full bulb. A rare mistake from your defending champion. That'll roll us Alexi Winterbottom and Ciel Gagnon. One of these young ladies will be racing against McKenna Thompson in the final. Lexi Winterbottom goes red. So Ciel Gagnon and McKenna Thompson will face off in the Junior Lightning Final. Attention in the pits, attention in the pits. Vancouver Car Ramp Sportsman to the lanes. Sportsman to the lanes. That is Sportsman to the lanes. Bring up Junior Street. As we get set to roll into the next bout. And with your defending champion, Tyler Smith, knocked out in the first round, it's a toss-up. Riker, Tom, uh, Riker Towson racing in the 1987 GMC 500 down at 915 to race Jordan Ormsby and the Pontiac Fiber down at 929. Green lights a pair. Eighth mile. Oh my gosh, Riker Towson. Eight ten thousandths under the dial. Talk about a tough breakout. Jordan Ormsby getting through because Towson went 914 with the nine and then a two on the 915 dial. Next pair up, Tara Monroe and Sophia Getz. 
2010 Chevy pickup race in the Ford F-250. Diesel pickup charging after Monroe. Sophia Getz makes the pass, moves on to the next round. Only seventh thou off the dial, too. Great job. So that is it. I'll save for this one by. This will set us up for the semifinals in Junior Street. James McNeil will take the by run. An easy time for McNeil to put himself into the semifinal round. Well, Emma DeVry Cruz was trying to make another testing or another licensing hit in the dragster, but the car just shut off on her. Seeing if they could get that dragster refired. And this time it's a full pull, 943 with a 9 at 141 miles an hour for Emma Debris Coos on that licensing hit. Uh, hit. Front engine dragster also still trying to seek that full pull this afternoon.
Well, it was a full poll, but we won't get the numbers on it left before the tree was ready. Moving into Bubba Speed Shop Pro Bracket. First pair, John to back to race against Nick Douglas. And a red light start for Nick Douglas. John DeBack will move on to the semifinals. Attention in the pits, attention in the pits. We'll stand by for this pass at least. Mount Patterson and Bobby Ehlers firing down track. It'll be 10.131 to a 10.13 with a one. That'll give it up for Mal Patterson. Seventh out of the good will put him to victory lane. Attention in the pits. Super Pro and Hot Rod to the lanes. Super Pro and Hot Rod to the lanes. That is Super Pro and Hot Rod to the lanes. Dustin Hunter going up against Chris Stone. And Hunter makes the pass. Chris Stone gets eliminated in the quarterfinals. Next pair up, Loren Schwartz and Ross Walker. Monte Carlo versus Chevy, too. Two green lights. And it'll be an 18th foul margin of victory to Loren Schwartz. Gets out in front of Ross Walker and stayed there. Grant Gordon and Bill Wells, the next uh, pair up. As we roll swiftly into the sportsman semifinals. Start for Bill Wells. Grant Gordon will move to the final in Vancouver Car Rap Sportsman.
Sylvia Hookston's here with the bye run and Sportsman. She'll make an easy run into the semifinals. That'll roll us around to Nick Douglas and Tyler Dobson. Tyler Dobson turns on the red light. Nick Douglas moves through, so he red lights out of pro, but he'll move on to the semis in Sportsman. Attention in the pits. Hey, listen up out there in the pits. Juniors, come on down. Juniors, this is your call to the staging lanes. Oh, oh well. Okay, you were supposed to be on standby, but we just fast forwarded you to uh, come on down. We've got a little bit of room back there. We'll, we'll find a way to make it work. Juniors, you can start making your way to the staging lanes. So I do believe next thing to go down the track will be Super Pro. Looks like they're still getting themselves paired up at the back of the staging lanes. So apparently we're going to shuffle Hot Rod in front of Super Pro as we're still waiting for one uh, Super Pro competitor to arrive in the staging lanes. So if you're in Super Pro and you're not in the staging lanes, it's where you need to be.
Old Car Center Hot Rod rolling around the corner and into the water box. Dustin Hunter will be the first one up, running that Ford Falcon dialed at 911. Racing against Roland Lowen in the 1955 Meteor with that 302 cubic inch Ford motor. Now at 1277. So Dustin Hunter going a bunch of rounds here today. He's still in pro bracket as well. About three and a half seconds or thereabouts be the separation back here on the starting line and Dustin Hunter is your winner Roland Lowen turns it red by 22 thou Dustin Hunter with a solid 13 reaction time then goes 909 with a zero on the 911 dial so Hunter off to the final round of hot rod where he will face one of these two guys. Either be Matt Warner or Jerry Brayben. Warner with his signature big wheels way up in the air start. 600's advantage on the starting line and he turns the wind light on. 43 on the 40, good enough to get the job done. Braybender three above the 57 dial with a 1060. And here we go with Super Pro. Titch in the pits, license and test, license and test. Bring them down. License and test, come on down. Now Loren Schwartz, Johnny Jenkins. John in the yellow S10. So Lorenz racing off the bottom. He's got the N on the window preceding his dial. And as he is the faster of these two cars, we see the dashes on the reader board, indicating that crosstalk is turned off for this pair. Couple of strong reaction times. Jenkins out front in the S10. Can he hang on? Yes, he can. 10.45 on the 47, he wins the double breakout by being the lesser offender. Lorenz did a nice job. He was 20 on the tree, took nine foul at the stripe just to be further under. John Jenkins going to the final round of Super Pro. Right now, we'll uh, decide who his opponent will be. Mike Robinson or Martin Michelle? MR versus MR. Both drivers are green. One of them's very green. And despite that, Mike Robinson gets the win. How about that? His reaction time started with a one. Martin Rochelle was 26 on the tree. Then takes over a tenth of a second at the stripe to be 10.05 on the 10.10 dial. Interesting. It certainly does not look like the wind is picked up, but uh, it's like there's a bunch of extra horsepower out there. Just about everybody's going fast. So Mike Robinson runs under his dial, but by just two ten thousandths of a second. So that sets up our Super Pro Final. Oh, 
We've got our junior dragsters. Starting to roll up to the uh, front of the lanes. So opening weekend here at the Titanium Strip at Mission Raceway Park. As we kick off the 2024 season. Say all in all, a pretty good day to start things off. So, first pair rolling up to the starting line. Adam Katnick and Alex Green. Katnick, tower side. Dialed in at 890. And Alex Green in the right lane, dialed in at 1213. CL Gagno, this is your personal call to the staging lanes. CL, we need you in the staging lanes once again. CL Gagno, we need you to the staging lanes, please. So Alex Green will get the handicap start. Three point two three seconds to be exact. Oh no. Appears as though Alex Green let him uh, let himself roll out of the beams. Makes it an automatic win. Here, that would be an automatic win for Adam Katnick. Dallas Jackson right lane, red light start. So Jack Green will be advancing.
Hey, listen up, listen up out there in the pits. We'll make the call now for Pro Bracket. Pro Bracket, come on back. Pro Bracket, this is your call to the lanes for the uh, semi-final round. So I'm not sure whether I had the mic on or off there, but uh, possibly I'm repeating myself. License and test, license and test. We need you in the staging lanes. Pro bracket, pro bracket. We need you in the staging lanes. So here we go, Peated Industries Junior Lightning Final in the box. Our first uh, two pair final of the afternoon or two car final of the afternoon. Seo Gagnon, Parat Torque Systems and Titanium Auto Group dialed at 793. McKenna Thompson for JBS Equipment dialed at 791. Both cars staged. There goes her lightning final. Thompson trying to run down Gagnon. Eighth mile. Give it to Seal Gagnon. Winning the season opener. Starting off 2024 with the trip to victory lane. Attention in the pits, attention in the pits. Pro bracket, pro bracket, we need you to the lanes. Pro bracket and license and test to the lanes. Pro bracket along with license and test to the lanes.
rolling into the semi I'm going to try again. Rolling into the semifinal round of Junior Street for Pete and Industries. Two trucks and a Pontiac Firebird remain. Sophia Getz, driving the Ford F-250, will be racing against James McNeil, 9.52 to a Sophia Getz getting around James McNeil making the pass. So it'll be Sophia Getz into the final. Jordan Ormsby will be the final driver up in the semifinal round of Junior Streets. It'll be Sophia Gatz versus Jordan Ormsby. Attention in the pits, attention in the pits. Car number P651. P651 in pro bracket. We need you in the staging lanes. P651 in Bubba Speed Shop pro bracket. We need you to the staging lanes. Trip zip with a nine for Emma Debris Coos on the licensing pass. Hey, attention to the pits, attention to the pits. Sportsman and Super Pro, we need you in the lanes. Sportsman and Super Pro, we need you in the lanes. That is Sportsman and Super Pro to the lanes.
lot of movement for that front engine dragster out of the hitch, and that thing was almost going to go around, and finally gets that full pull in, goes 9.20 with a 9 at the top end of the racetrack on the uh, testing pass. First pair up of Bubba Speed Shop Pro Bracket semifinals. John Tabak and Lorenz Schwartz. John Tabak going to roll through, takes out Lorenz Schwartz. John Tabak into the pro bracket final. Patterson and Dustin Hunter hop into it. And top end. Double breakout. It'll be the Ford Falcon to race against John Tabak in the Pro Bracket Final. Patterson got there first, went too far under. Attention in the pits, attention in the pits. We need Super Pro and Hot Rod to the lanes. Super Pro and Hot Rod to the lanes. 
That is Super Pro and Hot Rod. Come on down. Grant Gordon with a bye run for semi-final rounds of Vancouver Car Rap Sportsman. So now the big question is, will it be a Ford or a Dodge to face off against Grant Gordon in the final? Whatever car it is, it's going to be a blue one. Nick Douglas and Sylvia Hoogstens squaring off. Double breakout, fourth thou under for Sylvia Hoogstens, and it's a trip zip nine under for Nick Douglas. Douglas faces off against Grant Gordon in the final.
All right, Rad Torch System Super Pro Final on the starting line. Jenkins and Robinson both staged up. Green lights a pair, and boy, it's a race for the quarter mile. The Ford Roadster trying to get out in front of the Chevy S10. Can he stay out in front? Yes, he does. Jenkins breaks out by 9 thou. Mike Robinson, your season opener winner of the Rad Torch Systems Super Pro category. Attention in the pits, attention in the pits. All finalists, back to the lanes. If you are still in competition, then report back to the staging lanes. All finalists, back to the lanes. Once again, that is all finalists. Back to the lanes. We need all finalists. Back to the lanes. If you are still in competition, get yourself back to the lanes. All finalists. Back to the lanes.
Hot Rod Final rolling into the water box. Matt Warner for the Linden Service Center Ford. Racing Dustin Hunter in the Ford Falcon. 1040 to a 910. 1.3 seconds separate these two on the line. Warner and Hunter both off on green lights. Dustin Hunter chasing down Matt Warner to the quarter mile. Oh, doesn't get around him. Matt Warner wins by three foul on the whole shot. Rolling into Junior Thunder, and it's a pair of Green Brothers, both representing Global Containers. Jack Green versus Alex Green in the Junior Thunder Final. 1393, dialed in TCS side, Lord Coast side, it's 1210. Two green lights, Alex chasing his brother. And at the eighth, Alex Green going to stay out in front. Jack Green will have to try again tomorrow.
Junior pass to go, and it is for Pete and Industries Junior Street. Sophia Gatz in the Ford F-250 racing Jordan Ormsby and the Pontiac Firebird, 952 to a 937. And a red light start for Ormsby. Sophia Gatz taking the race win in Junior Street. Brings up your Vancouver Car Rap Sportsman Final. Nick Douglas and Grant Gordon, 2023 Dodge Charger, facing off against the 69 Dodge Dart. Both drivers away on green lights. And at the corner, Give it to Grant Gordon, winning Vancouver Car Raft Sportsman. Dustin Hunter. Sabak trying to stay out in front of Dustin. Running out to the quarter mile. And in. Bubba Speed Shop Pro Bracket. John Tabak takes the win. Tabak taking his win in the season opener by 13 thou. Knocking out the Falcon. That was our last final of the day. We do have three testing cars to run. So attention in the pits, attention to the pits. We are looking to do some winner interviews today. So if you are interested in having a winner interview taken, come on down to the, uh, to the winner's circle just behind the pit side grandstands. We'd be more than happy to give you a little bit of a chat.
So with a few uh, tuner passes left to go before we uh, close things out. Just want to give a big thank you to everybody for coming on out and making this an absolutely phenomenal opening day of racing. Check, uh, be sure to check in on the Facebook and on the website for updates about tomorrow. The weather is not looking too promising, but we'll do our darndest to see if we can get a race in. So uh, be sure to check the Facebook and website. We'll be regularly updating you with that. For now, though, thank you for coming out to Mission Raceway Park. We'll see you either tomorrow or in two weeks for race two. If you do want to be tar uh, partaking in a winner's interview, we are going to be conducting those momentarily down in the winner's circle. So if you're interested, get on down there. We're not going to be there all night. <laughs>